Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. It's seven o'clock and uh, we have a quorum, so I think we're ready to call the meeting to order. Um, and I have a pro forma thing to read. As chair of the Saxons River Village trustees, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of COVID-19 and his executive order, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. We're using Zoom for this remote meeting, having provided notice on the agenda. If anyone has technical difficulties, please contact Rick Holloway. Rick, um, nobody is here except for the four of us and you, so I guess we skip that. Um, everyone is here except Carl. Uh, note, any votes not unanimous will be held by roll call. So first item on the agenda, minutes if the clerk is absent and Carl is absent. Yes. Okay. Would someone like to take the minutes? Oh, I shall. Perfect. Uh, public comment. If there's no objection, we'll allow public comment on each item on the agenda. The open meeting law allows the board chair to use reasonable rules to maintain order including limiting the amount of time for each speaker. And I, I was assuming that we would have people here for both the speed radar update and the uh, proposed no noise ordinance, but I don't see anybody. This may be the shortest meeting on record. Now, um, one question, if you're opening up every item, um, what's the time limit? I think that should be set now. A time limit per speaker? Yeah. What do you think? Three minutes? Yes. Okay. What's the um, link? If that's in the beginning, or you go to Rockingham, vt.org. Yeah. Is everyone okay with a three minute time limit? I'm thinking sometimes people take a little bit to get going. Um, and I take Matt's point that it's good to have something established. I would prefer not to use it generally. It seems to me it's nice to have discussion, but it's certainly useful if... It would be a very three minutes, eight or... Um, well, I, yeah, I guess it just, if you're going to be overseeing it, um, we just kind of move things along when it needs to be moved along. I promise. I mean, in you know, we've all been in these meetings, and it turns to, it kind of veers off from the topic, and there's a story, and you know, I, I don't mind some of that, but it's good three, to see three, people. Up. Three minutes could be pretty long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, right, right, but if yeah. it's just being, you know, something hammered, you know, that's yeah. just repetitive, um, you know, maybe you can move it along, or okay. just so we don't, yeah. Does anybody have any public comments to report? Obviously, the, I don't see any public presence, so, okay. So, um, seeing no one here from the speed radar update, uh, although Rick, maybe you, your liaison to that committee, do you have an update for the trustees? Nope, not heard anything. Few people have asked about what's going on and last I knew there was they had not quite matched the donation I said that I would put up for it. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, I think we're up to the proposed noise ordinance. And was Kelly getting the link from you, Matt? She's in. I just let her in. There okay. we go. Hey, Kelly. Do it, doing my assistant duties of admitting people in. <laughs> you have the power, huh? I have the tech. I have the tech. <laughs> Kelly, you have the floor. Already? Wow. Thanks. All right. So does everyone have a copy of my um my noise sort of paper with links? Yes. 
Um, I can also share my screen if you want us to see it, but I think it's more comfortable for us to see your face, at least initially. Okay, because I was just going to share my screen. If you prefer, absolutely. I oh, don't know whether you have the power to do that. I want power. <laughs> okay, we'll just, try. I think, um, has everyone, maybe everyone's already looked at it. Have you looked at the uh, video, lovely link video of the Monster Machine? I watched it a bunch of times. It saved me a trip to the NASCAR track. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how do I get back on the screen? I clicked I, something. I don't need to share it then. I can just talk about it briefly. Just a second, Kelly. Matt, I wonder if you're if you're having trouble with the view. Um, if you look up on my screen, it's the upper right. Yeah. So there's speaker view and there's gallery view. Gallery view puts us all on the screen at the same yeah. time. No, I just clicked on the side because something came up and I just lost all of you. I still have. So look, look in the tray at the bottom and see if there's gotcha. a Zoom link there. I got it. I found it. Great. Thanks. Go ahead, Kelly. I'm sorry to interrupt. All right. So we've always had um, the uh, monster truck hobbyists down the road. And they've always been very loud, but they would basically, you could tell when they were working on it, they'd start it up and they'd shut it off and pretty quickly. And every Thursday night when they loaded it, we could hear it every Sunday when they unloaded it because they went off, they go off to competitions. Last year, they didn't do that because I don't think they had competitions. Instead, they had a dirt bike track down there and they had three motocross um, bikes running at the same time. And one of them, an adult one, was really, really loud. But, I mean, it was a little obnoxious, but it was COVID and, you know, they were busy and that was all right. But then this particular monster truck started on Sunday and it was unbelievable. Matt was working and I, I heard it like three different times. And then we started talking about it and Matt mentioned a de decibels and he thought, you know, like 80 decibels. And I said, oh, there's such a thing, then. I downloaded it on my phone and then at six o'clock when this monster truck started again, I ran down there and videotaped it and was shocked that it was 115 decibels, right? And then I looked up, well, city traffic is 86 decibels. And then I started looking up surrounding noise ordinances and realized that everyone has one, but Saxons River, it seems like, right? There's a lot of them. And West and they're all very different. Um, and Westminster's um, anything over 70 decibels. And this is at 115 decibels. So it was so physically, it, it, it just made me so angry that I walked down there and I just, I was nice. I just was really intense. And I said, you are ruining the neighborhood. This is not all right. You're good parents, but this is unbelievable, 115 decibels, and I'm gonna look up the law because this can't happen. So, um, and she was, you know, she was nice. She said, I will tell them. And I said, okay, and, and left. But then I started looking up noise ordinances. And I know that the, it looks like this, Matt always said, you can't do anything between, you can't do anything about it until it's 10 o'clock, right, at night. And that I think from what I saw is a Vermont ordinance, a uh, uh, state, Vermont state um, law of noise from 10 to seven. But the towns have passed ordinances to deal with daytime noise. And all those ordinances have different, you know, um, allowances, of course, mowing lawn, doing construction work, cutting wood, it has all of the allowances that in different variations that you need to be able to have freedom in a village to, you know, live. But it, there's also a lot of like music, probably when um, the boom boxes came out, you know, music became a big issue. Um, and I don't know, you know, to deal with that type of noise, um, I think there should be an ordinance. Um, so, for instance, uh, Matt hates this example, but up in, um, and I, I mentioned it to Tristan. Full, full disclosure, Kelly is my wife. and <laughs> Yeah, and Tristan, um, and I said, so our views instance, are different. <laughs> my, my son could move into the house that he's going to fix up, 
and decide that he wants to put a little motocross track around that property, right? And he'll have a big one that's loud, and Nico will have a little one. And they could, without a noise ordinance, they could run that like that, which is what's happening down here, right in the village, right? No, I'm going to be up there. <laughs> um, so that's just an example of what could happen if you don't have a noise ordinance. Mm -hmm. So my understanding is that Rockingham does not have a noise ordinance. Does anybody have background information on that? No. Um, I just, oh, go, ahead. go ahead, Ellen. I was just going to say I did some reading on it. Um, and yeah, they don't. The closest thing that I found that they had was they have entertainment regulation, but nothing's referring to noise. Yeah. Like bands playing. Mm -hmm. so, well, there is a there is a a noise ordinance in regards to the wastewater plant and water treatment plants um, <laughs> in town. Yes. <laughs> um, I I had it copied down. I think I I I'd have to go back and dig it back up. Um, and I think the so I did. I wrote to Chuck Wise. <laughs> Is it Chuck Wise? Yeah, Chuck. Mm -hmm. And I asked, asked him if he knew what the, if the village or the town had anything. And he said the oh, town doesn't, he thinks the village, the village of Bellows Falls, he thinks does, but he's not, he didn't, he didn't have it handy and wasn't, you know, it was last minute today I was chatting with him. So he didn't, wasn't able to pull it up very quick to see what it was. Um, and I was, I haven't visited him. I was going to run this by you and then make a plan according to what you all thought. Um, to do some legwork to um, try to further this idea. Yeah. And, and, I, and I called Ellen Howard and I said, how do I begin this? And she said, go to village trustees. And so that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, and she, um, so I look at some of the prices and I did ask Matt about this, you know, like a $50 fine. Um, one has like a $500 fine and, and, and Matt says, well, we don't have a police force. We have to pay every time the police come out here. And then he did tell me that this, you have that now so that you split the cost. You split like. Yeah, uh, let's not go to enforcement yet. I, I wanna make sure we explore all the pieces of, okay. you know, uh, the proposal before we get to the fine. Um, I think I think setting fines is a ways down the road. Um, Rick, I want to make sure we've exhausted your conversation with Chuck. That seems useful. I I mean I just barely started it today to see see because I, I would almost prefer that if there was if we were going to set an ordinance that it was a town you know that it was something that we piggybacked on the town. Being this being my second trustee meeting and I don't know what other ordinances we have or how we deal with them or how we enforce them. You know, I don't even know, I'm not even aware of Saxon's River Village ordinances at all. Do we have any? Good Good, good um, do you Matt shaking his head. I'm not sure if he's shaking it yes or uh, I don't know. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if we do because everything seems to fall under Rockingham, you know, mm -hmm. as far as yeah. uh, governance. Um, I, I don't think it's, um, well, I don't think it's, yeah, I, I, I understand uh, piggybacking with Rockingham, but you know, that's going to take on a, a different, uh, a different tone, especially if there are people that really care nothing about it. Right, you right. And I, I, I totally get that. I guess part yeah. of what I was curious about was, you know, if, if Saxon's River had any ordinances, kind of seeing them and seeing how they were written and how, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I know Amy said not to go to enforcement yet, but how, you know, how would we enforce such things? I, it, it raises a lot of questions for me, you know, right. it also raised the question of the, if the, the stock car that I've heard out coming some, from somewhere was your neighbors. Uh, sure. <laughs> I thought it was somebody over in Stickney's field, but I could never see him over there. And so now I was wondering <laughs> if it was just coming up the river. Well, well, it probably is. Because oh, there's, okay it was last year especially i could hear dirt bikes i could hear dirt bike racing but every once in a while and it was probably thursday nights mm -hmm. now that i think about it i'd hear it sounded like somebody with a, a stock car with open headers just like rum, rum. that's what we got 
<laughs> now, well, you didn't it, hear it. Like, you didn't hear it two Sundays ago. <laughs> that would have rolled. I don't think we, were, we might not have been around. I don't know. Yeah. My son's oh. band practice is on Sunday. We don't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Speaking of noise um, ordinances, <laughs> <laughs> but the neighbors might. Um, so back to. Um, Ellen, was it you that said, or Rick said that Bell's Falls has an ordinance? But I think that's not that's not Rockingham. It's Bell's. No, that's the village. Yeah, yeah. It's the village. So, yeah. as far as enforcing it, obviously they have a police force. But mm -hmm. at least, as we know, ordinances uh, serve a purpose. So that we, if there is an ordinance, there's a complaint. Um, you know how it's dealt with. Um, could be set up or 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 not ahead of time, or at least there's something in place so that if somebody has a, a severe complaint, they could call the state police or the Wyndham County sheriffs and make a complaint. And then there's something, you know, behind it other than there being noisy on a Sunday and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. right. So Kelly, was this on private property or this person's property? <laughs> The next point, but I, I wanted to just focus on the noise, but <laughs> it probably is going into um, village property. Um, and that I was going to go down and check, but I just like was thinking, well, first I'll, I'll get them towards on the noise piece more than. The <laughs> so, so Amy, to answer, answer your question. Yes, it is on private property. So, so oh. Amy, about, you know, exhausting my, my discussions with Chuck. And so a couple of the questions that I put out there to him were also, when does, when does a hobby become a commercial um, or business, you know, like if they're, if they're going to competitions and races and, you know, when, when does it, when does it cross that line from this is a hobby to this is some sort of a, a, a say business thing and what is the zoning for constructing such a thing? Like, you know, is it, you know, I'm assuming that they built this just by driving around in circles a lot, but you know, did they, is, is it considered development of the property or, or something along those lines um, mm -hmm. yeah. for this particular yeah. case, which, you know, again, goes beyond the noise, but it also, you know, gets into the, the, it, it is other ways to approach some of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I was wondering how zoning would play into this. Um, and I, because this is, I'm all new to this. You know, I have to just bear with me. Um, mm -hmm. Because I know when Pleasant Valley Brew Pub was open, they were limited to a certain amount of, you know, how late that they wanted to go. Right. Um, was noise factored into that when they were zoned for the time that they were? Well, in the in the um, different ordinances that I read, there's there's you know there's business noise, so people get get a the right to have businesses, and that's different than just a general nuisance noise ordinance. I think. To, to answer your question, Ellen, my memory is and you know, what not in a public capacity, but my memory is that one of the neighbors of Butters did complain about noise and traffic and people being out there late and that's why they had their their 10 o'clock closing time okay yeah, well I didn't know if zoning was like uh, everything was not it, it was the umbrella and then everything under it like noise fell into it and so I was thinking of exploring the zoning and seeing if that had if they get a bar license then they'll be a lot they'll do it under whatever the bar license of Rocky gives them. But that's a, that's a separate thing so that's what the brew pub would have had is a okay so but and, so and, and entertainment too yeah so um knowing a little bit more than I care to about noise levels both from a professional and personal experience these days 115 it goes beyond nuisance that's into that's dangerous that like 115 is where you're gonna you're gonna hurt your hearing pretty damn quick um yeah. and there were seven there's seven kids so i should have videotaped how close the the state housing is you know there's like there's there's windows and a building right there with family living there very very close to where they're they're doing this. So there's seven kids right in the area. There's a disabled man and 
abutting that. I would say less than 50 feet from where they're racing. Yeah. I mean, I just I just pulled up the chart that I have and you know, 100 115 decibels, very brief sounds can immediately cause irreversible damage. So it was my phone, I would have to get a better <laughs> decibel reader. And I definitely if they start running it again, I'm not going to hide my I'm going yeah. to Do you know which one you were using? What? Which, uh, which decibel meter? No. Was it the NIOSH? There's a there's one put out, but it's actually put out by um, OSHA and the CDC. This it's called NIOSH. I can send anybody who's interested a link. I actually have it on my phone. And it, and I don't then have to buy something. No, it's just too loud. <laughs> yeah, it was a last minute thing. That's for sure. Well, I no. think using an occupational safety meter is a great idea. And if you use this for your bit in business. Rick, that sounds like good advice for well, um, it's, anyone who, who wants to document what's happening. Yeah, I mean, typically, if we're getting really serious, we will bring in Project WorkSafe or OSHA to, to do some mm -hmm. testing. But this is an this is a smartphone app that is put out by CDC and OSHA for you know, it, it's it's probably better than Tool Smarter, Tool Noise, or whatever um, what's any other it? apps. What's the name of it? Thought I heard you say NIOSH, N-I-O-S-H? Yes. I did go through um, those links that you provided, Kelly, so thank you. Because I looked at Putney and Westminster and Woodstock, as well as the Springfield and Vernon. And Westminster was the only one that specifically had called out 70. But I noticed that Woodstock said the decibel as prescribed by ANSI, that American standard. So I don't know if that like gives it wiggle room so that if people later on decide, okay, this is super loud, um, it's covered under whatever the ANSI says. ANSI? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I talked to Ron, our neighbor, and he used to race motorcycles and he said, yeah, it was, he said, that's crazy loud. Yeah. He, his down below 90 when he was racing. So, so one of the things I'm wondering is um, how this plays out in terms of um, people's natural tendencies to push back when there's an official ordinance. I mean, one thing with having an official ordinance you can refer to it without actually using it. Right. Um, I think uh, we might need to have somebody who was official documenting the decibel level if we wanted to push back. And sometimes when you push people, it just makes them more obstinate. I don't think it will them, but I think um, uh, up street on the main street, there's another angle there to fight the problem in the house next to the store is when they're working on, on engines and it's loud that they're breaking the noise ordinance too. And that's one of the people places Chuck referenced when my, in my discussion with him is, you know, about hobby versus um, business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that they'd had they'd gone through that with them so this this NIOSH app um and I will send you guys all a link to it 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 re, you know it, it it has recording capability so you you record and you can it saves and prints reports that show the the time the decibel level how long they were I think it even will give you some info on the you know the duration that you can do that so I was just looking at it now and um it says 110 decibels for more than a minute and a half can cause permanent hearing damage. Oh. Um, Ellen, will you make sure that the notes reflect that? Yep, got it. Um, okay, um, I'm wondering about talking to Peter Golick about this. Um, he is the chairman of the select board in Rockingham. Um, he lives in Saxons River. Um, it, that was Chuck recommended that as well. And I, and I was talking to Ellen. I called her. Yeah. So two sides of the same coin. Yeah. I would have um, talked to everyone, whoever answered the phone. <laughs> um, but I, I think specifically I'm interested in, 
I, I'm not eager as a village trustee to take on a noise ordinance. Um, I, I, I get what you're saying. It's definitely a problem, but I would love it if it were a Rockingham ordinance um, that applied anywhere in the town of Rockingham rather than... I have, I have a problem with that, and this is why. Because I'm, I'm aggressive. That's one thing. But the because, other... Because what? Uh, because I'm pretty aggressive, and I just feel like people need to, like, take a stand. But the other thing is that there are people that say there shouldn't even be a um, Saxons River Village trustees, that it should all be part of Rockingham. I'm not one of those people. And I would say that this is why we should have a village um, of Saxons River trustees and that we don't always have to get caught up in the bureaucracy of a bigger board to come up with something as small as a noise ordinance that all the surrounding towns have, right? It's not that big a deal. And, and when you read it, you could word the ordinance to make people happy. But I don't think the, I don't think there's often that there's a noise problem. In some of those ordinances, they have a continual dog barking. That would have solved some problems that we had on the main street last year, too. So I, I'm not, I will, I mean, I will canvas, I will walk around the town and get signatures if that's what I need to get the board to try to do that. But I, if, if the town of Saxons River have the right to pass an ordinance, I would, I would say stand up and dare to do it if enough people think that we should. And if you need that, if you need me to get lists of people who would sign that so that it would help you feel more sure about something like that, then I would do that too. So I'm going to take a beat and ask Matt if noise ordinances have come before the board in your experience before. I, I admit, I know that you've been on the board longer than I have, but that's as much as I know about your history as yeah. a village trustee. Yeah, no, um, not that I'm aware of, um, but I would, I'd have to agree with Kelly that I, I don't see the harm in the village of Saxon River adopting a noise um, if she wants to take that up with uh, and touch base with uh, Peter Golick, uh, Chuck Weiss, and even the town manager just to make sure that it's in, in line with what it should be. Um, it's just a tool, just like the, the, the town, you know, putting this new ordinance for properties throughout uh, Bellows Falls, Saxons River, and Rockingham um, as a tool. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't see it as being something horrific for us as trustees. It's more of uh, trying to preserve uh, what, what it should be like to live in a village. Um, so a noise ordinance, someone is just going to say, you know, maybe contact a trustee. What do I do? I have a neighbor who's, you know, riding their dirt bike and it's noisy and it's above the decibel level. Well, called the, Windham County Sheriff's Department, we have an ordinance. We don't have to enforce it. It's, it's in place. Um, so I guess I would uh, I'd leave it up to Kelly to get something together and come back uh, to the trustees for, uh, for it to be uh, scrutinized. Would you, would you like me to walk around and get some support? Um, no, that no you've, you've brought it to the right place. It's up to us to decide. Um, I, I mean, that's my feeling, but I, I ask the rest of you what you would like. I, um, you, you've done some great research to get us started. You've talked about a specific problem and you've documented it. Um, I'm thinking now seriously about what next steps are. I would, in spite of your cautions to me that this should be a village trustee meeting, a village trustee issue, I am wondering whether it might be useful to us to have Chuck Wise come because he has more background in ordinances and answer questions for the village trustees. What do the rest of you feel? Well, I, I would think that, again, that um, if Kelly is gonna take this on, 
to uh, talk with Chuck Weiss and get uh, get some information from him and some feedback. You know, I'm sure she would explain what she's uh, putting together to propose for the, the village trustees to uh, consider. Um, I do agree that going to Rockingham with this, I think is gonna fall on deaf ears, no pun intended, um, very quickly because I don't think it's anything they really care about. Um, that's just my opinion. At times over the years that I've been a trustee, um, Saxons River has been kind of the, I don't know how to say it appropriately, um, but just kind of left on its own um, where Bells Falls and, and Rockingham have um, taken care of themselves. Um, sometimes I have felt that Saxons River has been just like, uh, it's Saxons River. So um, I'm not opposed to this initially, as long as she checks in with, uh, you know, Peter Golick, gets some feedback, um, you know, maybe he'll say, hey, I think Rockingham needs it and let's, let's do it. But I, I feel it would, uh, it would fail very quickly in Rockingham. Um, Kelly, Matt's suggesting that you um, talk to Chuck and to Peter. How do you feel about that? You can do that. Or I don't mind Chuck coming and talking to everyone. If everyone wants to be involved in doing that, that's fine. I don't need to take this whole thing on. I just want it passed. <laughs> but I will. I have some time. Well, and I think it's it's going to take some time anyway. We'll, you know, this is the kind of thing. I, I certainly feel like I would need to talk to the League of Cities and Towns make sure my ducks are in the row. This is new territory for me. I don't, you know, I haven't done an ordinance before. Um, Ellen and Rick are new. Um, so we would rely on Matt and Carl to walk us through. I, I think, you know, it's gonna be a learning curve just to pass an ordinance. So if, if you're looking for immediate relief, maybe we wanna think about what that would look like. Um, but I'm happy to invite Chuck to come to the next meeting. That's two weeks away. Seems to me that that would be helpful. Um, are you available to come that night? Because I, it would be great to have your concerns addressed. Kelly, what, I'm asking. What date is two weeks from now? Today is the third, so that's the 17th. Um, yeah, I think my daughter's going to be here. Our daughter's going to be here. <laughs> um, should uh, I guess I would um, I would encourage Kelly to contact Chuck prior to that. I mean, sitting and waiting, um, at least sure. have a conversation and say, you know, tell him he's going to be invited to come to explain it to us. And um, he was involved and came before the uh, the trustees with this this oh, new sure. ordinance. Yeah. Um, I think a couple different times and they came and asked our opinion. Um, so he's certainly a good one um, to be involved in this. And I would assume he wouldn't say, no, Saxon's River, you should not do this. Um, it's too I, bad they actually didn't tack a noise onto that ordinance. Yeah, well, they were going after other issues. Um, so my my experience with Chuck lately is that he's very, you know, he's, he is pretty supportive. And like, you know, my conversation I had with him this morning is like, maybe we should have more regular communications, like, you know, get, whether it's him and I getting together for coffee once a month or so, you know, just because all the other crappy mm -hmm. stuff I'm involved with. Um, so I think he's very, he's, he's, I've enjoyed working with Chuck on a few projects that I've worked with him. And I think he's, you know, thoughtful and, and mm -hmm. straightforward and, and will do a good job. So if you do, mm -hmm. when you do, not if, when you do reach out to him, Kelly, mm -hmm. you know, feel free to mention that I, you know, this is the same, same topic that I had reached out to him about and that um, to move it forward. And you did yank on my strings as to why I'm sitting in this meeting right now is, um, you know, Saxons Rivers needs to like stand up for itself and, and be its own thing. I don't want to fall under the guise of, um, belonging to the town of Rockingham solely. You know, I think Saxon's mm -hmm. River is its own village. It's got its own unique personality. I think that we, and I would, I, my preference would be that we drift a little bit in the other direction of like getting <laughs> further away from Rockingham. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Um, any other details? Uh, so, Ellen, if you look at your notes, what are you seeing coming out of this discussion? Mm -hmm. I took a lot of notes, so. <laughs> yeah, it'll be boiled down, though, because Carl, Carl has told me there can only be two pages at the most, so. <laughs> <laughs> you got two pages already? <laughs> so look at look at old minutes, Ellen, and, like, for something like this is, like, the, you know, discussion about a noise ordinance, you know, was carried Some out. will appear. No act, yeah, no action taken, communication yep. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Brennan agreed to do more research and we'll try to attend the next meeting. So that, yep. that's the that's the sum total of it. Um, typically. And I, I will volunteer myself to be the uh, a trustees representative to Ms. Brennan if she would like so that there doesn't appear to be a conflict of interest. <laughs> that right. or if, she, if she needs anybody that's to talk to, to go with her or talk to anyone else, I will. Well, actually, Matt was all upset. He said, you're going to go on Norma Ray. Don't go Norma Ray. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then um, I guess this concludes my part. Um, so thank you for listening. Okay, thanks, thanks so Kelly. much, you. Kelly. Uh, Hi, Ben. <laughs> Hello. He couldn't, he couldn't stay away, could he? <laughs> Just didn't know if my mute was on or not. <laughs> no, I just got home from work. Um, maybe we should go right. Uh, well, Ben, do you have a special purpose in being here? We're working our way through the agenda. Um, and I want to certainly reward you for coming. If there are topics that you wanted to speak to us about, we could rearrange the agenda. Um, so the, the reason why I logged on was... Um, that I wanted to just give a quick update on our efforts to, um, you know, submit for the remaining grant funds for the mm -hmm. wastewater plant. Okay, uh, so let the minutes reflect that at this point we are skipping uh, email recommendation minutes, warrants, and bills, and going right to the wastewater treatment plant um, and updates on our committees and in particular the wastewater treatment plant. That's where you are, right, Ben? Yes. Great. Um, yeah, so we, uh, I had a meeting last week with uh, Rob Wheeler and Alex Barrett. Um, Carl was not able to attend, so it was just myself and Rob and Alex, um, you know, tr trying to collect the receipts for the expenses that we've already incurred on the on the plant we also talked about some other um expenses that might be still outstanding uh some of those expenses have already been incurred but haven't been billed and paid and some of the expenses are proposed uh expenses that haven't been incurred yet so uh things like mold remediation uh with uh surf pro we have a uh, the village has a quote for that and but we haven't contracted with them yet for that um there's also a potential that we could uh, purchase some spare parts for the plant that might be eligible for reimbursement so uh, rob was going to collect a list of that um so we, we continue our work we're uh i don't know if we're going to meet this this week but uh you know we'll continue to meet and until we've uh got a full list of expenses that we can bring back to the trustees. It sounds like you're sticking with this, Ben, which is great news for yeah. the village of Saxons oh. River. Well, I, 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 I want to finish this out. Great. Certainly appreciate that. Um, and Carl is officially acting as our um, trustee for the grant closeout. Is that your impression also, Ben? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I think he had a conflict this past week. So um, he's but. he's out traveling, and um, I talked to his wife. Um, suggested maybe he could call in, and she thought because of the time change, he would really not be able to do that. So, yep. Um, and also, uh, you know, thanks to Alex Barrett, who spent some considerable time trying to pull together all of the uh, the receipts for the expenses that we'd incurred. You know, these were these were small expenses like 
ten dollars here, ten dollars there at uh, J and H Hardware. So mm-hmm. he pulled all that together and scanned it in, and sent it to me. So that's a big help. Okay. Um, while you're with us, I'm going to share some unfortunate news. We had submitted a claim um, to the leagues of League of Cities and Towns. Um, the report from Tom Allen at LS LCS Controls. Yeah. Um, Passive has uh, rejected our claim. Um, So what they wrote was, it appears that damage has happened over time due to condensation from high humidity. This damage does not meet the definition of of occurrence under 2021 VLCT passive coverage. And that, that coverage for occurrence arises out of an event, disaster, or series of events traceable to the same single act, omission, cause, mistake, or error, or series of acts, omissions, causes, or errors. So we do have the right to appeal that, but um, it, it seems like a pretty definite statement that insurance will not cover our um costs for are very expensive costs for repairing the um, wastewater treatment plant controls. Mm-hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. Where does that leave us? Paying a big bill. What was the cost? Uh, I didn't go back and look it up. Ben, you don't remember, do you? I don't remember, but I think it was on the order of uh, 15,000, 20,000, something like that. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it, is it worth... Uh, so the, the, this stuff, this equipment hasn't been installed very long. How long has this, the sewer <laughs> plant been open? Only, it's only been a couple of years, Rick. So is this not an error or an omission in part of the construction design that allowed this humidity to build up? And is it worth trying to appeal this at all to see if we could get Was there a warranty? Coverage? What was that, Ellen? Was there a warranty? So there was a, there was a warranty on the construction work. Um, but this... Uh, if the if the contractor built the plant according to the specs, then there's no warranty claim against the contractor. At least that's how I understand it. Correct. In this in this particular case, there was uh, electrical conduit that led up from a control panel up into the uh, like the ceiling space. It was up in the attic, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it yeah, led up the into, the, into the ceiling above the above the uh, the heated space. Um, so moist air from inside the building went traveled, you know, into the control panel, up the conduit, into the uh, unheated space. Condensate formed, drained down the conduit mm-hmm. into the control panel, and damaged the electrical control elements Mm -hmm. so you know if to me that sounds a lot more like a design flaw than a than a construction flaw right yeah so do we so do we need to send that to uh tata and howard and say you know what's up with this that sounds like a reasonable step. Yeah. Say so we, if it was built correctly, it doesn't seem to be designed correctly if condensation is coming right back down into the equipment. Right. And, and yeah. I'm surprised they could run a conduit like that without it being sealed at one or both ends for fire protection and whatnot. You yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and the, and the other... The other two, you know, big issues at the plant are, um, you know, moisture in the headworks room. So, um, you know, we've gotten 
got mold in that room. We've got rust on the door hardware, uh, possibly the door itself, um, but definitely the door hardware. And, and then the other big issue is that there's, um, you know, some, some noise that I, th I think has come and gone to some extent, but they, but, you know, uh, noise from the, the, uh, the air intake, which then feeds the compressors, which then provides uh, compressed air into the, uh, the treatment tanks. Um, so, you know, there've been pipe supports that have been constructed. There's been insulation that's been attempted. Um, and, and again, in that situation, the, um, other than the pipe supports, which the, uh, the engineers claim that the contractors did not install to their specs, uh, which I believe has been uh, corrected at this point. There's, uh, you know, everything else seems to, seems to point to some sort of a resonance frequency occurring within that system that's, that's causing uh, some objectionable noise to the uh, abutting properties. So can I chime in on that just briefly? Um, I did uh, the, of course I'm in a butter and yes, now that uh, the new building is up, <laughs> that's, that's a backboard for the, uh, the noise that comes off from that uh, unit. So um, any noise that was muffled from all these other, the insulation and the, and the supports, um, we can we can hear it um, sitting outside, and the other abutter, uh, uh, Ron Tompkins, um, came over and talked to me about it and said he can hear it yeah. more profound now because of the the building is the, the new storage building has been constructed. Yeah. So there's an there's an air intake on the the south side of the uh, the plant building. That's where the that's where the air is brought in from the outside to feed the compressors. Um, it, it from the outside, it sure seems like that's the area where the noise is emanating from. So I can understand where, what Matt's saying, where the new uh, the new uh, garage storage building was constructed pretty much right opposite of that. So the noise that might have traveled towards the river mm -hmm. and dissipated now might be bouncing off of that uh, storage building uh, that's newly constructed. Um, and I, it, you know, it's always seemed to me that the, that the, uh, the remedy of the problem would, would be focused on that air intake. Um, you know, that maybe it's, maybe it's too small, maybe, I don't know, there's too much velocity of air going through that. Um, but the, the, uh, the focus of the engineers when we brought the problem to their attention was on the supports for the piping internal to the building. So, um, I mean, Rick or anyone else, I, it might be something, you know, a, a good thing for you to go down and actually experience for yourselves. Um, you know, you might be able to, to uh, suggest another alternative, but um, yeah, those are, between that control panel and the mold issue in the headworks and this noise issue, they've been there ever since the plant was constructed. Um, and the engineer, you know, uh, uh, you know, tried to make some claims, uh, warranty claims for the, uh, against the, the contractor actually withheld or recommended that we withheld uh, some some payments from the contractor. So we, we have withheld some money. Uh, I think the total is maybe in the 17 to $20,000 ball, ballpark. Um, but none of the situations have really been resolved. Okay. So our insurance claim has been denied. 
how do we want to proceed? Did I hear a suggestion that we contact Tata and Howard? And for the benefit of our um, newcomers, Matt, do you want to talk about Tata and Howard? Um, ben could probably do a better job of that, but they... Well, the, they were just the engineers that were contracted to uh, design the, uh, and administer the construction of the plant. And where are they based out of? Just curious. Um, I think their headquarters are down in Massachusetts somewhere, um, mm -hmm. but they've got a, uh, I think the, the branch that serviced our project is, was based in St. Johnsbury, I believe, or Lindenville. Yep. yep. We're out of my uh, ballpark here. Um, <laughs> This is not an area I have any expertise in. Do I, as the chairman of the board, write a letter, hopefully with someone else's oversight as far as details and um, language? Is that what's called here, called for here? Well, uh, Carl has taken over as the main contact with Tate and Howard. Um, since since I'm no longer that that contact. Okay. Um, so, so this might, this discussion to, needs to involve Carl. You might want to run it through him. Yeah. That's a that's a great relief. <laughs> um, ben, do we is there any uh, problem with letting this go for two weeks? A problem that you see. I don't think so. It it does affect. Uh, you know, somewhat the, you know, putting together the, the, the funds that we submit to USDA, because if there's going to be additional expenses to cover, um, you know, that any of those costs that we're not getting reimbursed for, then we could submit those to, to USDA, but it would be in lieu of submitting other expenses. So uh, it somewhat needs to be a coordinated effort. <laughs> you know, if we, if we're getting, if we're getting uh, insurance money for some, for something, then we're not going to submit that uh, for reimbursement to USDA. But um, likewise, if there's going to be additional expenses to remedy in any of these uh, situations, then we'd want want to take that into account. Mm -hmm. um, you know, j just to give you an idea, right now I think we've identified all but about. These are very rough numbers, but all but about maybe $15,000 worth of um, expenses that we could submit for grant reimbursement. Oh. Um, some of that might may include like the, the mold remediation that hasn't been done yet, um, which was maybe six or $7,000 worth of work. Um, mm -hmm. But so, Anyway. Okay. So, so the end of that would be, we need to contact Tata and Howard ASAP, maybe so we can get a response before our next meeting. Well, I'm suggesting that we have, we have a discussion with Carl before we move forward on this. I, I guess we could, we could leave direction for Carl to write to them. Is that more what you're thinking about? Yeah, I would say if he can contact them with the, those uh, three concerns that Ben uh, laid out that um, at least it's, it's in the works instead of waiting for two weeks to, to talk to him. Do you have those three concerns in your notes, Ellen? I do. Okay. All right. Anything else, Ben? Oh, that's about it. It's it's great it's great having you continue to support us and guide us through this uh, complicated. Well of, well, of course, you guys are doing the hard work now. <laughs> okay.
Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. All right. Thanks. Signing off. Okay. Uh, while we're on committee reports, do we have anything on the fire station tonight? Uh, nothing this evening. Okay. Uh, well, let's return to um, item six, the email recommendation. Um, Rick, you were going to investigate, uh, I think, G a Gmail suite or Google suite as a, a possible supplier of emails for our village trustees. What'd you find out? Carl didn't send all the information on to anyone, did he? So he and I had quite a bit of discussion about this. Because we have a VTEL account at the fire station, so Gmail, the only way we could do it above board, um, we would have to we would have to have a paid account. And it was like I forget if it was six or twelve dollars per month per person on the account. Um, but if we want to have individual email accounts that are dedicated trustee accounts, mm -hmm. VTEL will give us up to we get up to ten with our VTEL account, so we could have. You know, and it and it could change. It can change as need be as as people change. So I don't know what Art Smith uses for the fire station, but we could have a a, a Saxons River Fire Department at vtel.net. We could have trustees at vtel.net. We could have Matt trustee, you know, at vtel.net. You know, whether however we decided to to make the name, it would be like at vtel.net. So it'd be mm -hmm. you know, Matt, you know, srgov if we wanted. Um, mm -hmm. And those are already paid for? Yep. It's, wow. part of, it's part of our VTEL account, you know, just like if you have VTEL at your house, you can, you know, we all have right. our own email addresses here um, and a family one. So it's for the, for, for our anchor institution <laughs> account, um, which is, they don't offer anymore. It's a sort of a legacy thing that is based on the phone number at the fire station mm -hmm. and where we have our, you know, because we have the, we have the internet connection there. We have, we can get up to, you know, some cloud storage and, and up to 10 email addresses. Plus right. we have, we have both of those at the wastewater treatment plant too. Yes. Phone number and um, Wi-Fi or internet. Yep. Okay, so what are we what are we gonna do? What's your pleasure? Rick, you seem baffled now. Well, I, I I mean I brought it up because it, it was a you know, like on the school board it was a concern and you yeah. know other other public boards I've been on, it's been a it's been a concern. Yep. Um I have enough, you know, I have like five different email addresses now, so it's not really a big deal to me. I'm used to, to handling and dealing with it. It's more of how we're, you know, how is everyone else comfort and what is their concern? I think it would be pretty easy for us to do a, a Matt S R G O V yep. Ellen S R G O V and yep. and Carl said he would take care of it. So it's just a matter of how do we want to um, help me out, librarian lady? So you're looking for <laughs> what you're thinking is some uniform, something uniform that that everybody can just put their own, you know, like their own first name on or their own first initial last name. And then. Yeah, something like that. So it would be, you know, the, it would be at vtel.net would be yeah. the, mm -hmm. the end, but similar yeah. to like the one that Louise Start has that's on Gmail, it's um, you know, srgov. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And, and so something, something short, so it's not like, you know, somebody's got a lot of like. <sighs> we can't do anything like saxonsrivervillage.net or .com, it has to be at vtel. No, yeah. we'd have to pay to get some, you know. And I, I, I didn't go, I didn't get too any further than into that with the the VTEL people. I just like what's what's free and available, <laughs> or what if we did the if we did the paid Google thing? Yes, that's what that it would include that. So then it would be Matt at Saxons River Trustees dot dot yeah. or net com whichever. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I will continue to use the one that has been used for the Village Trustees. Um, 
Carl walks me through that. So I'm now reading email routinely and keeping it clean and making sure we're up to date there. Um, so I think I don't, I don't need one, um, but it, and the treasurer has one, has a Gmail account, unless there's a reason not to use Gmail. Um, but I, I think because so much useful material comes to that account already, I'll stick with that. Yeah, and it's just and it's just a matter of do we want to slowly start to transition away from that into into um, another account? I mean, another thing I think I need to follow up with the that I would I would like to double check with the VTEL people one more time is just the the archiving. So, you know, next year when Matt's wife takes over my trustee position, um, <laughs> would all the Rick SR Gov emails be archived somewhere and accessible so that if you guys want, if somebody needed to go back and search and find something, um, make sure that it's there. That's yeah, a good I would, question. I would, uh, I would be in, in favor of making them all the same. I know everyone has their preference, but if we have, if we don't have to pay extra, we should keep all of this stuff, um, you know, on, on something that's just village. Um, mm -hmm. you know, currently, I'm, I use my one of my accounts, personal accounts for this, um, but I would certainly be in favor of, you know, a VTEL just for the village stuff. And it's easy, easy enough over a, a short period of time, Amy, to not be sending stuff through the Gmail and, and jump on you yep. know, the other one just by notifying people and, and using it all. Yeah. But keeping that one until such time as it. Yeah. I have worked for an organization that used these VTEL accounts by position. So children's librarian or STL children's child at VTEL.net. The idea being that you wanted to establish a position rather than an individual. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I don't know whether that gets into the archiving question. Do we have 10 forever? And once we've used up Rick no. SRV? No, I mean, it, it, it's that, that, that could work it well. Like we could have, um, you know, SR, you know, it could be SR chair. Mm -hmm. It'd be right. one of the email accounts right. and mm -hmm. it just gets transferred to whoever is the chair at that time. Yep. yep. And that would, that, that, that would even, that would even um, perpetuate so then, the archiving a little bit more because then whoever becomes chair next time then has that whole email history going back however far. Yep. yep. So what do you do for the, the binions that are just uh, trustees? How would that you trustee. wouldn't want a name. You wouldn't want a name on it. A number thing. Yeah, it could one, be trustee two. one, trustee two, trustee yep. A, trustee B. I mean, yep. I know, yep. so so when you well, said I look a little baffled there, Matt. That's kind of where I was like, well, you know, how do we? Yeah. So I think that I think we need to figure out that prefix. Yeah, no, that sounds good. You're going to have a chair. You're going to have a, a clerk. Yep. You're going to have a a, a co-chair and thing one and thing two and. <laughs> <laughs> a chair, a chair, a clerk, a co-chair. So that just leaves. Um, our co-chair is our clerk. Okay. Carl, isn't Carl both the co-chair and the clerk? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to have to have two accounts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, for next for next meeting, think about what you want to call yourselves. Thing you, one or thing two. I'm, I'm thing okay. one or thing two. SR yeah. thing one. Ellen, <laughs> you're SR thing two. We should have Saxon uh, SR upper SR. Yeah, or, I mean yeah. Lower, <laughs> SR, the, the, lower the, SR. The, <laughs> the, the one positive thing, the one good thing, or or you know, to keep in mind about having it be named for you know, like Matt SR Gov is that. If somebody wants to write to Matt, it's easier for them to, to figure out who that is than it is. Yeah, to... yeah. Um, we have had the practice of giving yeah. emails on the uh, website, the Rockingham Vermont website, RockinghamVT.org. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I feel really good that we're public and transparent that way. But I feel even better 
if it is an email specifically linked to our functions. Mm-hmm. I right. think that's that's yep. much. Um, sure. I, I mean, I I I firmly believe that's why I'm getting James Mitchell newsletters. You lucky um, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I will come. So I will put together a quick list of like, you know, so chair, clerk, co-chair doesn't mean that, you know, we could have those email addresses and Carl could decide which one he wants to use. Like I would think he would use primarily clerk, um, but he could set up to get anything that comes from either. And then on the like on the website, you know, to 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 ease that kind of transparency of who is who it would say Matt Brennan thing one Saxons River. <laughs> um yep uh, yeah, no, i'm fine with that is there a specific mail utility we'll be using for this rick no. something that vtel sets up no. you can use any, i i get all everything i have all of my i have five different email accounts that all come to um a, into one google account right Perfect. And if you're served with a request, you can separate out the, you know, somebody, somebody uh, demands all correspondence regarding the trustees. You can um, funnel just. Yes. Yep. Great. Perfect. Rick, do you have them as aliases? <laughs> no, I just, they all, I, I can, sh I can show you at work sometime. How would oh. how I have it set up? Um, well, give us give us the buzzwords so the rest of us can figure can Google. <laughs> I will take I will I will take some screenshots and send and and Great. send you pictures individually of, of how I have it set up. Okay. Yeah, an alias for me is I have at my Chrome work address I have Elon, but my alias is Ellen at my work address, so they both come to the to me. But people could use either one. Yeah. That's what I'm referring to. Okay. That was a lengthy but extremely useful discussion. And, and uh, remember, my rule I told you all last time is just don't put anything in an email <laughs> or a text or writing in any other way that you would not to show, want to show up in a court of law somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready to move on to the minutes for approval? Uh, you got Robert's rules before that. Oh, crud. Hold on. I'm working from my own cheat sheet, and it's done me in. Mm -hmm. Robert's rules. Thank you, Matt. So, um, Rick suggested we might want to adopt Robert's rules for small boards. You need a motion? A motion? Oh, do I need a motion? No, I, do, I don't. I don't want to rush in there. Okay. <laughs> um, you are free to make a motion if you want to. My suggestion. I began discussing this with Carl, um, and we're a little bit leery, both of us, of giving up the structure of having an initial motion, which requires a second, or it dies. Um, I think both of us enjoy the need for more than one person to agree that something is important enough that two people really want to see it on the agenda, uh, on the, for discussion. So that, Honestly, that is the only Roberts rule uh, that I that I've been thinking about since we met two weeks ago. Um, Rick, I know you've been on groups that have used small rules of order. Do you want to speak to what you see as key advantages? Um, the only the only advantage we saw was the the reduced formality, and it you know it typically streamlined things a little bit. I I get what you say. Um, I think that the important thing is it says they do not need to be seconded. It doesn't mean that they couldn't, um, you know, and, and a lot of the stuff is, you know, 
this this is where it gets a little bit it can be a little bit funky is like you know i don't know if, how many of you have actually read all the way through robert's rules of orders but um it's a lot of very dry boring reading and and you know technically we're supposed to stand up obtain the floor before speaking you know the chair is supposed to stand um you know and those are things that the the rules for other things that the rules for small i sent you the list i think mm -hmm. You know, like the chairman doesn't have to stand up to put a question to a vote and can enter discussion and usually remain seated while conducting the meeting. To, you know, it's stuff that most of the boards around here don't follow mm -hmm. that detail anyways. The only thing that is, of, in my opinion, is that members can discuss a subject while no motion is pen pending. Members can speak more than once on a motion and they don't need to be seconded. Yeah, I don't think, and I should have reread the bylaws. Um, I, I don't believe the bylaws say we must use Robert's Rules of Order. Does anybody recall? I know you've read them more recently than I have, Rick. No, I didn't see anything. So I don't think there is, uh, you know, anything which forbids us taking our own, speaking more than once to a topic, for example. I mean, clearly we do that all the time. We don't feel constrained by Robert's rules. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, I am ready to move on to the next topic then. Okay. <laughs> uh, the minutes from the meeting of April 19th. Do I hear a motion to approve those minutes? I'll move okay. to approve the uh, vote. Oh, you did, I'll second. I'll, uh, huh. You got it. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 And there were no there were no abstentions or uh, no votes. So we don't have to do a roll call. <clears throat> um, warrants and bills. So I'm gonna put up the um, current warrant. And I apologize. I thought I was being so careful to uh, can you see that now? Yep. Um, nice. We got, uh, so Art wrote to me on Sunday to tell me that there were fire department bills um, and they were in the fire station. Um, it took me today to, to, to today to retrieve them. And I also got a bunch of mail in our uh, mailbox. So uh, including two USDA system improvement bond payments for uh, 3872 and 51482. So the, the new warrant that I just sent out today with apologies is quite a bit more than the old warrant. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're willing, I'd like this to be the warrant we review and discuss tonight. Matt, I think you had some issues about um, whether we had enough information are there items here that you would like more information on? So it's just the items that have monetary amounts attached. I used um, I used a general bill. This is this was the, the previous chairman's practice, and I have retained it. I used a general bill, but anything that doesn't have a number on it, there were no there were no bills um, to attach to this warrant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it'll it'll be fine for now. It's just like I said, for you know, all these years we've had bills come before us and say, you know, every once in a while you're like, hey, what is this for? You know. Mm -hmm. So here we're just seeing something in a number. So there's no, it's hard to hard to question things really. Mm -hmm. That's all. Um, but th this is fine for now. Okay. And I'm sorry, uh, I'm not. Um, this is new to me. Is this per month? So it varies from month to month, um, but you will you will get at least one a month, probably two, to look over and um, but this ask isn't questions about. This isn't the expenses for one month at a time. We're not seeing those screenshots. So this isn't just everything for April. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> can be right like the uh, the USDA thing is going to happen every month 
It is, okay. For that, for that amount, yes. And then okay. the other things will will vary. Um, the Zoom license, obviously, but like uh, uh, the insurance may not be a monthly thing. Uh, okay. The UI insurance services is probably not a monthly thing. It might be a yearly okay. thing. Um, okay. So uh, then we have uh, the so Green Mountain Fire fire extinguisher inspection so there's some that are it'll vary okay you know there's no uh there's no vtel for any of the three locations in this bill so i would assume there would be in the next one yeah there wasn't the last and it's because we yeah. meet twice a month ellen there will some things yeah. we'll see, you know we'll see at one meeting or the other but we'll yeah be there the sludge so. removal casella waste management that'll you know that's a monthly thing it's just okay. not in this cycle, so it's kind of little ebb and flow. Okay, thank you. One thing I did like about my this monthly bills aren't that much. <laughs> one, one thing that I did like about um, this format, Amy, was that it it listed out the the all the things that might be there. Like mm -hmm. I really like that. That like you know here here's the list of our regular bills and what mm -hmm. came in this month. Um, mm -hmm. And when we do get back together, I think I, I don't think it would be a terrible thing to have this be instead of signing all the individual bills. If we have mm -hmm. the re rest of the bills, we can look them over and then yep. just sign off on this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree to that. Yeah. Is, like I said, it, it, at different times, we've just gotten things and, you know, someone would pick up something and hand it to the next and go, what is this? So it's just a, you know. The double checking yeah. of things. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I catch things. I catch things all the time in my day job by actually looking at the looking at the actual invoice and saying, "Hey, wait a minute, we didn't yeah. get two of those." Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So. Um, okay. Uh, so if you're ready, um, typically we would have a vote to approve the a warrant in the uh, in the appropriate amount. Ellen. I approve. <laughs> no, it's your turn to make the motion. <laughs> oh, it's my turn to make. <laughs> sure. You want us to coach you through this? It's pretty exciting, yeah. Ellen. <laughs> um, it's big time right here. Like I'm just reading up on the uh, Roberts rules, <laughs> and then and then we said, "Yeah, hey, you don't even have to." Yeah. So typically, you would say, "I move to approve." I move the warrant. to approve <laughs> the warrant. Presented today on May 3rd at 7 p.m. For the amount of? For the amount of 50, I got to go back. $56,575.84. This is really mean because she's taking all the minutes as well as making the motion. <laughs> In the amount of 56575 and 84 cents. Is there a second? Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ellen? Are you aye. voting aye? Sorry, Thank you. Right. Unanimous. <laughs> the motion passes unanimously. Okay, we've done committee reports and updates. Uh, are we... Oh, review of trustee terms according to the bylaws of the village trustees. That was for me, and I have completely lost it. So um, I would like to defer that to another meeting. Okay. And we already did Robert's rules for small boards. Yep. Which is 12, so. Um, executive session, if necessary. What about other business? We don't have that. We need other business. Who put this agenda together? It's terrible. Is there so any I, other business? I, I, I have one small other business. Great. That's appropriate. Um, so back to the, the, the racetrack down by the wastewater treatment plant. Um, I think it would be beneficial to the village to um, somehow... Um, have that property line marked out. I know when the the upgrades were done to the wastewater treatment plant, they they didn't find the the other pin down by the river, 
So they didn't really string a line on the property line. Um, but I think it would be beneficial to um, have that, that property line flagged and maybe um, get a few signs that say no motorized vehicles beyond this point. Um, oh, so I think we should discuss that at the next meeting. I'd like to have that as a warned item so that we're sure everybody has a chance to see it. Yep. So um, are, are you speaking about surveying the property line? Well, I think what has to happen is, yeah, allegedly the property was surveyed prior to the upgrade, but I don't, I think it was just done from recollection. Um, I, what I assume what has to happen is a surveyor has to come and reestablish. There's two pins in place coming down the right hand side of Plant Road. And from the, the maps I've seen, it seems to go straight down to the river. Um, but I don't know that to be sure. So yeah, a surveyor would have to come and do their triangulations and figure out okay. where that line goes. So if I put on the next agenda, discussion of survey of village property on Plant Road, is that enough to get us where we're going? Sure. Yeah. Suggest better wording, please. No, no, that's... Okay. Other, other business. I have one that I think I'd like to put on the next uh, agenda, if it's all right with you. Um, I think the 4th of July committee is meeting now. Um, I'm not a member of that committee but I've seen a couple of things that make me believe that they are getting together. Uh, that is not a uh, Saxons River Village trustee event, but we do have um, ownership uh, supervision of the Saxons River rec area. Right. Matt, is it true that if we decided not to allow, for example, events for the 4th of July at the rec area, that would be a final statement. Is it up to us what happens at the rec area on the 4th of July? Um, As not, not what happens, not what happens, but just giving the okay to allow it to happen. Okay. The 4th of July committee typically comes to the, the trustees and say, hey, we're, you know, we're gonna do the typical thing you know, games and whatever. Fireworks. So yeah, fireworks. Yeah. So um, we don't, we haven't had a hand in it. So should I invite the committee to come and talk to us at the next meeting? Sure, they have their next meeting. Uh, they had their first meeting just this past Thursday and they have another meeting coming up this Thursday, I believe on the 6th. They're meeting at Main Street Arts at seven o'clock on Thursdays. So I have a question. Is it is it happening this year? Yep. Awesome. Not sure what's happening this year, but there's they are they are planning on doing something. You know, they're looking at um, you know, games and parade and you know, mm -hmm. bands on the grandstand, you know, music on the grandstand. I don't know how far, you know, I haven't got I've got a little bit of details, but not too much. Do you know who the chair of that organization, of that need, of that committee is? I can tell you real quick if you want to wait just a second. I'd love to. Um, let's see. The president is Sue Hernandez, Vice President Crystal Hernandez, Treasurer Pat Fowler, Secretary Heidi Loricella, and then the directors are Daisy Mortensen, Shauna Mortensen, and Jan uh -huh. Guile. Wow, it's a good group. Yeah. The plan is to have an event that is a copycat of past years. <laughs> um, good. Okay, so I'll invite Sue Hernandez to come and um, update us. Sure. Does that sound appropriate? Sure. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Uh, what else for the anything else? I don't know if it's typical at a trustees meeting or not, but I'm sure you're all aware that uh, Mary Jane Bosworth, a long, long time Saxons River resident, passed away last week. Um, yeah, I didn't know the other day. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to note that here because I think she lived here her entire 77 or. Maybe a moment of silence. I think your camera froze. <laughs> I think so too, because I was like, hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, my internet connection is unstable. Um, okay. I think that's it. No need for an executive session, correct? No. Right. Motion to okay. close. Second. Sure. Yep. <laughs> Thank yep. you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.